Welcome to labmins.com. In this video, we will look at the Security Group Access or SGA features on Cisco ICE and how it works with the ASA 9.1 to integrate with Cisco TrustSec architecture. If you're not familiar with Cisco TrustSec, we encourage you to watch our video SEC0061, Introduction to Cisco TrustSec, before proceeding with this lab. Here's our lab setup. Okay, so we have Cisco ICE running version 1.1.2 at the IP of .102 and a domain controller at the IP of .40. So our scenario is going to be we have two users, admin1, who is a member of admin, a network admin AD group, and then employee1, who is a member of a employee user group. So when these users logs into or tries to log into the network, there will be a sign. Corresponding SGT tag for the network admin is 100, and the employee will be 101 from Cisco ICE. We will be building the access control list on the ASA based on these tag values to enforce the network access to internet. We will be configuring switch 1 to pair up with the ASA over the SXP protocol where we use it to send the SGT to IP mapping to the ASA. And we will also be configuring the ASA to download the SGT table or SGT to name mapping from Cisco ICE after it is done the PAC authentication. Since the server will not be doing A2.1x with the switch, we will be configuring a SGT to IP a static mapping on the switch and have it assigned the SGT value of 102. And now for on the access list that we're going to be configuring on the ASA, we will make sure that any traffic that is categorized as SGT 100, we have the HTTP only access. With the SGT 101, we have ICMP only. While the SGT 102, which is for the server, will have everything permitted. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the user configuration on the domain controller. So here in the Active Directory Users Computers, under the Lab Minutes Users OU, we have an admin one that is a member of Network Admin. And we also have an employee ones that's a member of a employee user. Okay, now on the ICE user interface, the first thing we are going to configure is EFAS settings. So we, since we're going to be creating some pack with the firewall, so under the administration, if we go to settings and under protocols, there's EFAS. We click on that, there's EFAS uh, settings. And here we're going to change the default name so we can easily identify our Cisco ICE from an any service engine to, let's call, let's change it to the actual uh, server name, which is LM ICE. One. And here, if you want, you can tweak some of the uh, master key generation period and all that, but we're just going to leave it at default at this time. So we'll click save. Let's take a look if there's anything interesting um, under the generate pack. Not too much you have to play around with, so you can also leave it at default as well. Okay, so next we're going to create a security group tag. So the way to do that is to go under policy and policy elements and results. Actually, before even we do that, there's uh, also another settings that we have to change, which is uh, also under administration and under security group access. So by default, when you generate a SGT on ICE, it will be automatically generated number. But if you want to have a control over the what value you can choose to assign for the tag here, you have to come under here, security group access, and that's just the reserve range. So we're going to be, since we're going to be doing a range 100 through 102, let's just do 100 through let's say 110. Okay, so save. Now that we have a reserve range, we can go back to under the policy elements, security group access, and under here, you have a couple of things that you can configure. One being security group ACL or SGACL, which we are not gonna be covering in this video, but if you are doing like a full-blown TrustSec deployment, then, and you have a device to support SGACL, this is where you come in and configure that. And we also have a security group mappings that will where you can create an IP to I just want to show you, although again, it's not really applicable to what we're doing in this lab and the device where you need to support it. But the idea is you can do a manual static map between your security group and an IP address of the device that's not really supported uh, or have a tag assigned as they lock into the network. And you can actually push this out to all of your egress devices. Okay, but for here, we're going to create a security group and you can see by default, there's an unknown with the SGT value of zero. If you were to, let's go ahead and add. And if you do automatically generate tag, it was just gonna keep incrementing. You can see right here already, it's gonna pick value of two. But for us, we're gonna create a reserve value. So let's 
let's say you want to create a SGT for a network device when it comes in Authenticate. Again, it's not applicable to this lab. I just want to show you what it looks like when you have this value automatically generated. So you can just give it a name, leave the allow system automatically generated tag by default, and then click submit. You can see it picks up value two. And now we're going to create a value that we're going to be using, which first one is the network admin. And we would like to use, you can see it's incremented three already, but we would like to use our reserve uh, range. So first one is SGT admin. We said we want to use SGT uh, 100. So save, we'll create two more. Next one is employee. Value will be 101. And last one, which is for the server. The value will be 102. So submit. Okay, so now that we have the tag configured, we can go back and uh, start configuring the uh, authentication authorization policies. So first thing, let's cover the authentication policy and see what we've got here. All right, so so far we only have the map configured since we're gonna be doing 802.1x. Let's go ahead and do duplicate the one that's there by default. Make sure you enable that. And we'll call it LM wired. 1x condition is already set for wire.1x allow protocol we will be using peep in this video so you want to do lm peep tls against pre-configured in the previous lab and we would like to use the ad so we can use ad local again the sequence was pre-configured in the previous lab okay so click save next we need to create an authorization condition before we build our authorization policy so Coming back to here on the policy elements, actually since we're there already over here, let's uh, click condition and authorization, compound conditions. And it looks like we have a bunch of those created already um, when we did the peep 802.1x. So we're just gonna duplicate and then make a little adjustment. So here we pick the Y user. We're not gonna be doing machine authentication here just to keep it simple. So frame, match ethernet, um, radius, and for the group, we want to, well, actually, actually, let's go back and change the name. So this is going to be wired for the network admin. And we need to match the network admin right here. And we're not going to do the wash machine authenticated. So let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so submit. Okay, now that we have the wired network admin, let's duplicate that one more time. And we're going to change the name to employee. So create two separate conditions for those group of users and we change that to user group employees. All right, so now that we have the condition, let's go back to the authorization policy page. We can now creating our rules. So let's go ahead and insert rule below. And this one we'll call it LM, just to match the name, wired network admin. And condition is the pre-created condition compound conditions and let's look for a network admin which is right here and for the authorization profile we're just going to keep it simple and do permit all since we're not enforcing any downloadable acls or anything here let's find lm permit all and on top of that we also want to assign the sgt value to that users so we'll click uh, click on the plus sign under security group you should see a list of uh, sgt that we created on the other page and we're gonna select network admin, say done. Let's uh, duplicate below. And this one's gonna be for employee. We'll change the compound conditions to employee. We can still doing permit all, but instead of network admin SGT, it will be doing the employee SGT. There you go. And then save. Okay, before we proceed, um, I want to show you right here, there's also another area where you can configure or where you configure the security group access policy. Again, we're not dealing with that in this lab because this is what it's for is to create a, what is called its egress policy. So an egress policy is made up of a combination of source security group. You can see it changed to the, like a matrix view. And here, what it does is create like a table and allows you to assign like an SGACL when there's a match on the SGT and the DGT, which is the source and the destination security group tag. 
and that way I know how to it's somewhere similar to downloadable ACL but instead of downloadable ACL it's based on the match on the SGT and the accesses can be downloaded by the egress device to apply for that particular sets of traffic. So again, we're not doing this because it's more like a full-blown uh, trust act. And there's a second tab over here, which is for a network device authorization. And this is for when the device first joined the trust act domain, needs to authenticate against each other, you know, get authorized to be on the network. And this is where you will configure it and even have the SGT assigned to the network device themselves. Again, neither of these will be dealing with this lab. I just want to point that out to you because it's uh, showed up on the as configuration here. Okay, so uh, at this point, we should that should be it as far as the configuration on ICE. While we're on here, let's bring up the authentication page so we can kind of keep our eyes on that. All right. So now turning our attention to the configuration and the switch. So the switch is going to have to collect all these uh, SGTs since it will be receiving as part of the radius reply once the user has successfully authenticated from ICE. So switch will have both information as far as the source IP and the SGT value. So on the switch, let me pull up the switch here. We need to turn on a device tracking, which if you not already have, but you should when you configure that to support ICE. So device tracking. So switch know exactly what IP lives off uh, which ports. And on top of that, you might also want to if the device tracking is insufficient, you might want also to turn on the IP DSCP snooping here. So the command is IP DSCP snooping. So let's spell that correctly. So snooping. Also snooping. Let's just globally turn on the features. Now we have to select to turn on, on the VLANs. And since we're dealing with a user VLAN 64, so VLAN 64. And then usually we also turn off the... Uh, snooping information um, option. Okay, so now we can do like a quick test and see what the switch see when the user is authenticating. So here we have a port where the test machine is connected, uh, shut down right now. So we can do no shut. And then we're gonna bring up uh, here. This is our test machine and we are at admin one. So with this first try admin one and Cisco, okay. Locking in, we can jump back to ICE, monitor page. All right, so you can see admin one has successfully authenticated. And if you look under authorization profile, we assign permit all as, as well as the network uh, admin, SGT. So now if we go back to the switch and let's do show auth session interface 19. Here, just the same old outputs, but one thing that shows up this time is the SGT and value 64, which is the hex value of a decimal 100. Okay, so the SGT value has been assigned to this user now. And you can see there's a MAC address. So let's do a couple show command like uh, show DSCP device tracking all. And here, since we have the device tracking turn on, it knows the exact IPs and which gets mapped to the port and the MAC address and the VLAN. Okay, we also can do the show DSCP snooping bind since we have DSCP snooping turned on. And again, it's very similar information. So you can see both features provide you pretty much similar sets of information. Okay, most importantly, we want to do a show CTS, for, uh, which is just short for security, uh, Cisco Trust Sec. If you question mark, although the switch we're running here is, doesn't really support full blown trust sec, but it's enough to run, you know, SXP and to learn SGT from ICE. So the command to look up the tag is uh, CTS row base, SGT map, and then let's do all. Oh, we can do question mark. And if you know exactly what device you're looking for, but here, let's just do all. So here so far we have one IP to SGT mapping for the user we just locked in. So you can see it has the IP of 64.33. It gets maps to SGT value 100 that was assigned from ICE. Okay, and the source is local. Okay, so now that we have that mapping, let's just make sure the user has internet access because right now we haven't really configured an ACL on the firewall and we do have internet access. At the same time, let, uh, let's bring up command line, make sure you can ping 4222, for example. Okay, so we are good.